Okay, well, let's actually use this. Uh, let's use this uh, GPS. Uh, let me show you one thing that I really, really like about it. I think it's one of its best features in the option, and that is the overlay page setup. Uh, you can display. Now, for this, I'm going to take the glove off. Don't do this while you're riding. You can pick almost all the data that it knows, and you can choose for it to be overlaid over the map display. So you see, for example, these are things I'm not showing right now that you could show. Distance to the next turn, steering arrow. I actually am showing that, I think. Uh, ETA to the next point, time to the next point, uh, what time it is, sensor data, battery voltage. Uh, uh, you can have mu uh, information about the music you're playing song, file name, artist, etc. Altitude, position error, all of that stuff can be put onto the overlay. Now let's look at my uh, my overlay. I have the speed, you can control the size of these. I have the speed in large letters, it actually has an even larger size than this uh, down here. I have for the route, that's the, uh, the time to the uh, end of your route, you could also choose to have the current time and the uh, and or the uh, the time to the next waypoint. This is the distance to the next waypoint, the distance in the route that's left, the average speed, you're heading southeast and the next thing that will happen is a left turn in 13 seconds. This shows a, a map I picked off the POA to a restaurant near here, the points of interest. Let's turn on the simulator mode and you can get an idea of what it looks like while it's moving. So we come over here to options. I think it's on the third page. Turn to GPS. Take next left. So now she's the. We're simulating it. You get this a turn preview page that turn you can actually left, select. Point three miles. And you see, there we go down the street. Notice the uh, the speed is covered up a little bit. That's really nice when you have a motorcycle speedometer that doesn't really mean anything. Uh, you also have. There's another turn preview. Your choice of view modes, which Arrive I can't really on right in show you with that, miles. but it has a north up mode. That's what I usually use. A, uh, I'll put the glove back on because you do this stuff while you're riding. It has a track up. Excuse me, track up mode is what I usually use. That straight up is the direction you're going. North up is just like a holding a road map, and then 3D is like a lot of GPSs have. It's kind of cornball, I think, but it shows you from sort of an elevation angle. So there's north up. I don't use that. I use track up. Uh, the fact that these uh, this menu shown here means that I've been moved it. The dots are of prior track. That's probably how I come to work. Uh, you can turn that on and off whether or not it leaves breadcrumbs where you've been. Green is parks. Now you can go in or out by hitting the plus or minus. So let's go out. 0.2 miles. Uh, you know there here we're getting. There, there we are. A little. A little further away, around Rock and Austin and stuff. Little towns around here. And if you want to zoom in, you hit that. If you want to cancel and go back to your present current map mode, hit the X. And you're done. Now we're navigating. And again, what's over on this overlay is completely customizable for what you want it to be. If you don't want anything, you can turn it all off. You can cover the whole thing up with all sorts of stuff if you want to do that. It's very versatile. It's an excellent GPS, I think, for the money. There are some capabilities that uh, that some of the new, uh, newer GPSs, or, or not newer, but more expensive ones have, such as the big one I'd like to have is XM Radio and XM Weather. I've actually got a GPS, a portable GPS, that has that for aviation, but it runs in an IPAC uh, handheld, and there's no way that hold up to the environment in a motorcycle. Uh, so let me sum up the uh, XOG GPS in my book. Uh, it's a relative, the advantages are that it's a relatively low cost unit, about $240. It's tiny by GPS standards. Uh, it's got a nice touch screen and as you can see you can do most things pretty easily with a motorcycle glove on. I really like that feature. If you want to see what's ahead of you, just uh, flick over your wrist or, or you know, back it out as far as you want to go. Um, there we are at a, you know, there's El Paso there, and there's Mexico, and there's Memphis, so that's how far out you can go if you want to. And to go back, you hit the X button. Now it stays at the scale. This is a 200 mile per centimeter scale, so 
you know, <laughs> that's kind of the big picture. I'm not going on roots, roots that big yet. Uh, the trails is really nice. There's a program called GPS Babel that will take the uh, Lawrence native file for, format and change that into the universal GPX format. So you can take those trails that you made and uh, put them on uh, Google Earth or, or uh, Google Maps or any other typical graph, uh, mapping program. MP3 player I like a lot. Uh, it's really nice on a long drive to be able to listen to a little music or some spoken word or whatever you like to listen to. Disadvantages are the screen could be brighter. A really bright day, I can see. Let me let me get to a smaller scale here. I can't. <laughs> uh, on a really bright day, I can see the overlay numbers fine, and I can see the big picture of the route, but I can't see the details because it's not quite bright enough. Not when I'm wearing my sunglasses anyway. You could always, no, no screen is too bright for a motorcycle. A lot of people fashion a plastic cover, and I may do that to fits like this to kind of shade it a little bit. That'd be a good thing to have with this GPS and with most others too, I think. The battery life is very short running just on its internal battery. Only, really, if you had the screen on very much, only a couple of hours. Now, you don't really need the screen. When I ride my motorcycle, I'm primarily relying on the voice to get me where I'm going because I don't want to have my head down into this one riding the motorcycle anyway, except to glance to see my speed in the big picture. Uh, it's uh, no NEMA output. There's no output to a computer, so you can't connect a computer to this and save your GPS data that way. So remembering your trails, and you can take them off uh, by plugging a computer into the uh, uh, USB port, but that, that you have to save the data to the USB card and read it off the card. There's no real-time output of data from this. Uh, this has fewer points of interest than some other GPSs that have bigger memory cards. Uh, build, b bigger built-in memory cards, but uh, they uh, uh, this still has several million points of interest in it. And that's pretty much the XOG GPS. I, I think for $240, you're not going to do better on your motorcycle than this. Oh, one other, yeah. I was just going to mention the waterproofing. It's water resistant, really. Uh, this could be rained on like this and it would be all right, but you wouldn't want to immerse it. And if you had uh, uh, plugs in here, you'd have to do something to kind of help seal that up a little bit or water could enter through the plugs over here. But I like my XOG and I recommend it to anybody who wants to buy GPS on a budget. I have a Ninja 250 so I didn't want to buy a GPS that was 50% of the value of my motorcycle. That didn't make any sense so I bought this and I like it. Thank you. This is Jim and I live in Texas.